So the first thing you're going to want to do each day for teaching, for learning, and for day-to-day -day business is open up the applications you're going to use for most of the normal business throughout the day. This is going to be a Chrome browser and Microsoft Teams. Now you're strongly encouraged to download the desktop application of Microsoft Teams just because it has improved stability and functionality, though the browser-based version is absolutely fine. Now when you've got Microsoft Teams open, you should see either a set of tiles of the teams that you are a member of, or indeed you might see a list of the teams that you are a member of. You can change this by going into your profile picture at the top, and this is where you can change a lot of the settings. Go to settings, and then you can change the layout to either list as I have it, or indeed to the grid format. And you can see in the background here that has changed to show tiles, and it's entirely user preference. This is also where you'll change your notification settings, which we'll come on to in a bit. So once you've got a browser open, and I strongly recommend a Chrome browser because again, it's more stable, it has more functionality, and it works with more UE-based stuff. Once you're there, um, either navigate to My UE by Googling, or in the case of me, because I'm logged into my Chrome browser with my Chrome account, I have all the add-ins and bookmarks and saved passwords and all that sort of stuff as uh, you do on, for example, your phone. So I have this blue add-in button here that opens my Microsoft Office 365 suite of online applications. And this by default logs me into my university um, account because I am on a university device. It picks up my credentials automatically for having logged into this tablet as, as that. And so you would then want to go to your email in Outlook, where you can access your email and your calendar, and you can access all of your normal Office 365 um, applications, including the browser-based version of Teams, but primarily you're going to spend most of your day with either other browser tabs open, such as for Blackboard, or you're going to be using email and calendar to join meetings, make meetings, and receive, and of course, send emails. Having access to your Office 365 OneDrive app is also hugely beneficial because this enables you to link files, share files, create files, all within your browser without having to worry about downloading onto the actual device. And this can work across your mobile devices as well by using the OneDrive apps. So that's really the main thing to do when you set up the day. By having those two things open, you can get an enormous amount of things done. Now, the other reason that you want to have Microsoft Teams open is because you don't want to be getting email notifications that people are trying to reach you in Teams. If you work with Teams in order to know that there are things to do, there are messages, there are conversations going on, is it makes your day a lot easier. And so you're able to change the settings such that you're not bothered by emails and getting pinged all the time. You can choose what you get notified about and what you don't. Um, for example, I have the Teams app on my phone, but I have the notifications for mobile turned off on my device because I don't want to be notified every time someone posts a chat in a thread or tags me in something. I can instead open the Teams app on my phone and I can see that there is activity to do, and I'll show you how that looks now. So if I change this back to the list view simply because I prefer the visual, it looks a bit more like my inbox. And I can see that these teams that have bold names to them, they are teams where there is some activity going on. And I can see this in a variety of teams that there is new activity for me to look at. Okay. And if we briefly open this one, I can see that the specific channel that there's that activity is also bold. So the team name itself becomes bold to let you know there is something in that team. And then if you expand the view by drop down menu, then you can see which channel that is. And you might want to therefore go in and look and see if it's just a general chat. If it is something that someone has tagged you in or they have tagged a team that you're in, if someone's actively trying to 
draw your attention to something, you will normally see it up here in the activity navigation. Okay. If someone is having a personal conversation with you or they are communicating with you personally, you'll see it in the chat. In that case, you don't need to tag someone using the at symbol before you type their name because it is a one-to-one -one chat. You can, of course, create group chats, but that's something for a different time. So the main things you're going to be seeing are the Teams navigation, which shows you your list, and it will have, as I've got here, the general channel in my sandbox open. It shows me just some of the, the most recent activity and the most recent stuff will be at the bottom. You also have the activity navigation up here, and that will show you the most recent things that almost require your attention. Either a team has been tagged because you are being told that there is a document or there is a particular question being posed that maybe you can answer, or you may have been tagged personally in a conversation. Another good place to go is to the calendar. Now, this is the same calendar as in your Office 365 Outlook calendar. You're able to create Teams meetings within that calendar and you're able to host them within channels. So it's really a second place for you to look for meetings and it will show up those meetings and those appointments and tasks that don't have Teams associated with them. It's basically a replica of your Outlook calendar at its simplest level. So you can use it in much the same way and you can schedule meetings within it. As you can see just here, there is now an at symbol in one of these Teams. And there is activity with one. So there is one thing going on for me to look at. And I could click on that and see specifically what it is and see a, a preview of the message. But I can also see here that this team has become bold and there's a one next to it. It means that there is activity that I've actually been tagged in, either by the team name or by my name, that I could go to and that it is currently unread. Okay, so that's an example of activity that's worth my attention, so to speak. So the thing I want to draw your attention to now is changing the notification settings, because this is going to be a big thing for people. It's a big reason that people either do or do not buy into using Microsoft Teams. Um, when you tag someone in a team, and it is something that requires their expect their their engagement, and the expectation is that a particular project or a team is working in Microsoft Teams, you don't want that person to not be engaging because A, they never open Microsoft Teams because they don't like it, and B, they've turned off all notifications for the application such that they're not even getting emails about it. If you are someone that doesn't like to use Microsoft Teams and you don't want to have it open during your working day, you probably should have email notifications turned on. Otherwise, you might be missing important messages, important files, important conversations, or perhaps more crucially, important requests of you and things that you should be doing. So if we click on our profile picture, you can change the picture. You can set your status just like you can in Skype for Business, email, Facebook, that sort of thing. Uh, and it's advisable if you are using your device in the evening but don't want people to be tagging you and messaging you. At the end of the workday, if you're using your device for personal reasons, just change the setting to appear away so that people don't think that you are available for doing work. But if you go into the settings, you can then go to notifications. And within notifications, you can see there are a range of settings there. Now, these are customized to what I prefer to have. For missed activity emails, I have this as turned off because I don't want to be getting emails in my inbox telling me there's activity in Teams when I'm an active Teams user. If I'm someone that doesn't use Microsoft Teams, then I may well want to be getting email requests, but I have this turned off because I have Teams on all day long. In Teams and Channels, you can then customize what you get as to which ones pop up for you. And so you can go into the Customize section there and you can choose where you see the different notifications. Now, there are two main types of being notified outside of emails. You have either the banner or the feed. The feed is in the activity channel that you saw before. The banner is effectively a pop-up. Something will pop up in the corner of your screen telling you there's a notification. Now, this can be intrusive if you are in a meeting and you're getting pop-up notifications about activity and messages and conversations and tags going on in other Teams or in other meetings that you're not currently in. And so I find it more useful to have activity that requires my attention to just be sitting there within the Teams application that I'll get to after the meeting I'm in. And therefore, for personal mentions, team mentions, I have them show only in the feed. I could have it in the feed and the banner, so a pop-up as and be in the activity 
um, banner um, feed, but I have it as just the feed because I want to know it's there. It's risky having it as off because unless you are constantly checking Teams or unless you have the email notifications turned on, you may well be missing important activity. Conversations that I started, I don't have notifications for those because if I'm tagged in something uh, by name, then it requires my attention. What I wouldn't want is to put out a general message to a team and then encourage the conversation to continue, but getting notifications every time someone posts in that thread. It becomes an unnecessary intrusion in your day. Likes and reactions, those are quite handy to have. I only have those shown in the feed like other notification settings. Those are handy for in meetings, but sometimes it's good to have them turned off because you don't need to know every time someone does a thumbs up for a post you did several days earlier. And of course, I also have channel mentions here. And that's where in the teams where the red logo appears, the red at logo, that shows me in that feed that there is a particular channel within a team mention that requires my attention. It might be a team where there are several channels and I'm really only an active participant in one of those channels. And so it's nice to know that there is a channel in that that needs my attention. I can just check in on it. I can ignore that message if it's not something that's particularly relevant to me or I can engage and reply to it. So once you've set whatever you want your custom ones to be, you can go back to settings and make sure that you're happy with the rest of that customization. So for example, in chat, you can edit that to give specific notifications. And again, you can do this for feed and banner for mentions, replies, likes, and reactions. You can also do it for meetings. And here meetings is an important one to go to because Generally, if you have accepted a meeting and you are not able to be in it, you will still get the um, feed notifications of there being chat. You'll also get a banner notification if the meeting has started. Now, this can be quite useful as a pop-up because if it's a couple of minutes before a meeting has started and you are going to attend it, it's nice to know that someone has entered into the virtual room. It gives you more of a reason to maybe join the meeting early as well and have a bit of a conversation. So a pop-up there is quite useful rather than stumbling across the activity in your side navigation. I do, however, have meeting chat notifications muted, and that's just a catch-all for whether I've um, agreed to attend a meeting or not. What you don't want is to have agreed to attend two meetings and only one of them you can end up making, but you're constantly receiving the chat messages of the meeting that you're not in. You definitely want to have that turned off as the banner because you don't want pop-ups. But equally, you may want to have mute until I join or send a message because what that's saying is I'm an active participant in this meeting. I've either joined it or I have typed something in it and therefore I do want to know what's going on. What you wouldn't want if you find you can't attend a meeting or you decide not to join a meeting or not to accept a meeting invitation is to have the chat of that meeting persisting in the background, filling up your activity, or even worse, you're getting emails about it. And so if you decide not to attend a meeting, it is a very good idea either to have the mute until I join notification setting done or indeed to actually decline the meeting rather than leave it as a maybe or a yes, because you risk receiving notifications that you may no longer wish to get. And so I have these muted just as standard to minimize the amount that I'm getting, because again, I'm an active user of Teams, and so I'm very much in there in the moment, seeing what I need to see, and it therefore because it doesn't become intrusive. That's really the main notifications that you want to look at. You can look at people and other for different tips and prompts. So say you want to be told when someone that you know has joined Teams, a colleague or a friend or an external partner, but this isn't really something that you would need to engage with too much. So that's an overview of how to set up your day, how to change the notifications in Teams so that you can make the best use of it without feeling that it is being intrusive or that you are not able to engage with it as much as you would like. Now, one thing briefly to go over here before we get into tagging is the chat function. The chat function is built into Microsoft Teams and it gives staff or student the ability to look up any other staff member or student and engage in what is really instant messaging. Now, staff to staff instant messaging is fine. This is akin to what we can't do at the moment and that's dropping by a colleague's office to ask them a very brief question or to have a normal collegiate chat. Student to student instant chat is fine because you may be using that as an additional social platform. If you don't have the mobile number of someone in your class, you're still able to engage in a private conversation with them. But it's not really appropriate professionally for 
a member of staff to instant chat with a student and vice versa. One of the problems with doing so is that the sender of a message can see when the recipient has read that message and therefore there may become an unrealistic, even if unconscious, expectation that the recipient of the message should be responding instantly to whatever it is that you're asking them. Therefore, students and staff should be emailing one another with particular queries. If it's something that's just between the two, if it's something private, if you're asking a particular question or you are requesting to have a meeting, either that's staff with student or student with staff, email is the way that you should do it. Students also, of course, should not be putting meetings forward for staff to accept. It is the responsibility of a member of academic staff to suggest a meeting calendar appointment with a student. A student can ask to have a meeting with a member of staff, but it's very important that the staff member then reply, usually within two working days of receiving the email, to either say, sure thing, let's have a meeting and to suggest a date and time, or possibly to propose a date and time by using the scheduling manager and their calendar to set up an event for you to either accept or decline. And therefore, you can have a Teams meeting to discuss whatever it might be that requires more than an email. Um, this is an important thing to bear in mind in terms of working patterns. If there is that unrealistic expectation that the recipient of a message should instantly reply and they happen to have glanced at it outside of working hours, there shouldn't be that pressure on them to reply and that goes for staff and students. Student time is student time and staff home time is staff home time. If a student receives an email from a member of staff at night, they sh the student should not feel in any way obligated to reply to it until the working day. The same thing for staff receiving emails from students. People are welcome to send emails at whatever hours they send, but please don't expect engagement or replies outside of office hours. And that's just something important to maintain and keep in your minds when you're using the chat function. If a student does, however, want to do the dropping by the office kind of query like you would on campus, the way to do this is to go into the chat to find the member of staff by typing in their name. Once you have made sure that their availability is green rather than yellow, meaning they are away from their desktop or red in that they are busy or in a meeting or doing a task, if it is green, you could then try, if you feel it's appropriate to have a face-to-face -face discussion with them, to either audio call them, which would be similar to calling their office phone, or to have a video call, which would be similar to knocking on their office door and waiting to be allowed in to have that conversation. Please don't be offended though if a member of staff doesn't answer that call. Just because their status is green, that means that they are actively at their computer, but it doesn't always mean that they are actually free to engage in a conversation. They may be busy with another task, marking, something like that. And so please don't be offended if they don't answer, but that's the best way to try and get in touch with them, to have a meeting if it's a very ad hoc and quick thing. If it's a more serious thing, however, or something involves a long, longer conversation, you would be best to email them and ask if you could have a meeting and then have them set that up using their calendar and have a Teams conversation that way. If, however, you want to tag a member of staff in a continuing conversation within a team and you want to draw their attention to it, not in order to pester them, and the same thing for staff, not to constantly tag individual students or groups of students to draw their attention to things, because, of course, we should all be checking in with Blackboard, Microsoft Teams and our inboxes to make sure there isn't anything that we should be doing or that we should have our attention drawn to. And what you do is you simply type at and then the beginnings of their name. And if it is a member within that thread that you are doing, so here we can do souls and I can draw attention to every member of this sandbox team, which in this instance is just myself as it's my play area for testing things out in Teams. If, however, you wanted to type the name of your tutor and you are in the team that you and they are a member of, it will then tag them by using that at symbol and you're able to ping in their activity that there is something that their name has been tagged to. If, however, you just type their name, if you were to say, Hi, Chris, I was wondering if we could have a meeting or Hi, Chris, do we all know what we're supposed to be doing today? I won't know that you have typed a message to me because you haven't tagged it. It's only if I go to that team and to that channel and to that thread of conversation just to see if there's anything that requires my attention that I would know about it. And therefore, provided it's appropriate to do so, tagging a member of staff or a student's name can be quite useful.
Even within group conversations within a thread on a team, if you are to tag the group to make them aware that you have, for example, put up a file for them that might bear their attention, you can then tag individual students if you want to relate particular parts of the message you're writing to them. So if you want to say, thank you very much to a particular student for putting this together, I think the whole team will find this useful, you would tag the student in the middle of that message by using at and typing their name, and then you would also tag the group in order to draw the collective group's attention to that message and to that file. So that's an overview of notifications and tagging and best use of Microsoft Teams and generally Office 365 in your working day. I hope you found that useful and hopefully you'll find other tutorials also beneficial to your learning.